Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, I am getting ready to download a particular program from, I mean, a particular document that was mailed to me today. And so someone is sending that to me. We got something that we're going to talk about. We're going to highlight some definitions. Many of you may not be aware of this definition. So what you're going to do on your own time, not on mine, is you're going to go to 2252 of the CFR Title 37, I mean, Title 31. So 225.2 definitions. Now, agency, agency, department, agency, instrumentality of the United States. Okay, what's an instrumentality of the United States? The Federal Reserve, Federal Reserve Board, those are instrumentalities of the United States. The court buildings, instrumentalities of the United States government. They're all agencies. Authenticate instructions means to verify that the instructions received are from a bond official. We are not concerned about any of this information. That's not what this video is about. This video is about this information. Custodian means the Federal Reserve Bank or an entity within the United States designated by such Federal Reserve Bank under terms and conditions prescribed by such Federal Reserve Bank, a depository but depositary, excuse me, specifically designated by the Secretary of the Treasury for the purpose of this part, or such other entities as the Secretary of the Treasury may designate for the purposes of this part. Definition means that the government obligation is issued and engraved, or I said definition, definitive means that the government obligation is issued in engraved or printed form. Now, mind you, Point three six three point six. Custodian means a minor account. Custodian of a minor account means a person who opens an account on behalf of the minor. Custodian of a minor account means a person who opens the account on the behalf of the minor. Who could have opened my account on behalf of the minor? The Federal Reserve. Is that that secret account everybody's talking about? Actually, yes, it is. And here's your proof that that account exists. However, those of you who have been trying to access this account have not been accessing this account properly. How? Because you don't have the right. Why are you saying we don't have the right? Well, simply because it is. Pay attention. Do you see where it says custodian means this? So we're going to go to 363. Now, yeah, we can go here. Yeah, we can go here. We can go here. Come on now. Come on now. Let me go there. 363.6. Okay, we're going to look up what minor means. Minor! Come on, minor. Come here, minor. There, minor goes. Minor account means an account that a custodian controls on behalf of a minor that is linked to the custodian's primary account. Hmm, Federal Reserve. Federal Reserve. Uh, Fed, Federal Reserve. Fed, Federal Res I'm sorry. Let me make sure you guys understand what's going on here. The custodian's primary account. Custodian means the Federal Reserve Bank. So the custodian would be the Federal Reserve Bank. They have a primary account. Your account is associated with the Federal Reserve Bank. I know. How come nobody else told you this? Because I only received this code a moment ago in a conversation with a young man who showed me the code. And I told him, didn't ask for his permission, and I should have asked for his permission, but because the code is out there for everybody, I told him I was going to tell this to you all immediately. So when you're dealing with those other people who claim they know law, none of them have shown you proof that the account exists. But as I told you from the very beginning, see, a person means an individual or an entity. See that right there? Person means individual or an entity. What's an entity? Well, let's find out what an entity is. Oh, we have to go to 27 because that's going to help us to see what an entity is. So we're going to go to 27, okay? 27, 27, okay. Look at that, ACH, there it is. Anyway, pay attention. Minor means an individual under the age of 18 years. The term minor, it's a term, people. It's not a name. It's not an adjective. It's a term. The legal term minor is also used to refer to an individual, another legal term who has attained the age of 18, but has yet to take control of the securities contained in his or her minor account. That's what it says. 
Okay, so let's find out where else we need to go. Y'all ready? Let's take a trip, y'all. We're going to go to 363.27, okay? We got to go back. Back to life. Back to reality. Back to... The, I'm sorry. I apologize. However do you want it. Oh, however do you need it. However. Sorry, I'm just having one of those days. I got a really bad headache, y'all. But I'm taking the time while I have this headache. While I've been up all day doing videos and working on that affidavit, and the affidavit, ladies and gentlemen, I tell you, the affidavit is set up perfectly for just this. But you guys are not going to understand because most of you will never see the affidavit. The affidavit is only for those people who subscribe to our services. And the call that I was having, we were actually talking about how we're going to secure your securities. While you go do whatever else you want to do with it, we are going to do what we promised to do, secure your securities. Well, what is that? What is that going to do for us? What is that going to do for us? That's what we keep hearing people saying. When we've already told people what we're going to do, but they think that that when we snap our fingers, we can just make people jump, jump, jump to it. And that ain't going to happen. Okay? That ain't going to happen. What we promised you is that we we're going to secure your securities on your behalf. But the only problem is we can't do that because you haven't signed an agreement with us. See, you've agreed for us to file your document, but you haven't agreed for us to handle your securities on your behalf. So we have a limited power of attorney that we are creating for you. You'll receive it by Friday of next week because we have to word it to where it protects you. Not where it protects SACCOM. SACCOM is going to be protected because I'm writing the agreement. But we have to write it to where it protects you. Because, see, what if... I was to go away, sailing, take me away to where I go. I'm sorry. What if I were not to be around? How could I protect your interests if I'm not there? So I have to make sure the contract is written up in such a way to where your interests are protected. I spoke to a gentleman the other day, and he told me about how Ron, who took over the Legal Redress Commission, literally took it over, um, how he didn't help anybody who was already under contract with the Legal Redress Commission. That he didn't help anybody. That he took their money and didn't do anything. I have several people that he took their money, and now I'm on the hook for that. That's why their names were automatically added to the lawsuit. All they had to do was show me proof of the contact with that idiot. You see, I already have a copy of the emails, but it's too many emails for me to go through and find out every single person. In the future, I will do that. Why? Because I'll have to. Because there are some people who don't watch these videos who don't know that this is going on. So I'll be under obligation to do that. But if you don't do it and you have the opportunity and I got emails from you and all that stuff, hey, I don't want to hear it. I, I mean, I really am serious. You know, ladies and gentlemen, before I go on and showing you what I need to show you, I had this individual. He actually wrote me telling me that I don't treat you guys with respect. Really? Ladies and gentlemen, I just had a person call me several times today. I tried calling the person back and they won't answer the call because they didn't recognize my number. I don't give up. I tried calling back. As busy as I've been today, I tried calling this person back. And this person let it go to voicemail every single time. So now that person goes to voicemail every single time. Those of you who call me and you don't leave a message, you dial my number and you don't leave a message, you only need to call once. You call three and four times, you're not getting a response. Leave a message. If I don't call you back after you left a message and I check all of my messages, and by the way, in the last five days, only three people have left messages. Several of them have left messages telling me they just wanted to say howdy. They just wanted to say thank you. Just wanted to say, you're great. And I really appreciate that. But other people have left messages asking questions. I told you. And I'm doing the best I can. Stop calling me, asking me questions. I don't have time to answer your individual questions. You see, that's the part that they don't like. They don't like me telling you to stop doing something I've already asked you not to do a hundred times. How many times have I said my number is not up there for you to ask me personal questions about your own personal situation? Told you my fee is $500 and nobody has paid my fee, so you ain't getting no answers. I'm sorry. I didn't want to go all 
that idiot that I don't like, Samuel L. Jackson, on you. But it's time that you know that I'm a nice guy. Everybody and their grandmama says I'm a nice guy until you piss me off. So those of you who have been around for a while, who are not like these new people who are so demanding, who are so selfish, who are so stuck on themselves. The young lady who was trying to get in touch with me told me that she used a social security account and she went and she bought herself a brand new Cadillac, a brand new 2017 Cadillac. And uh uh-oh, it went through at the beginning, but it didn't go through at the end. And so they want their truck back. And she's trying to figure out what to do. Ladies and gentlemen, I told you all to do your own research. I told you about the fact that I did a video. I put the money order up there, and she probably used the money order, y'all. A money order that I just put up that day. Did no research whatsoever. Just went and did it. Just like the other young lady who went and tried to buy three cars with the hour style money order that I produced. July 7th, 2012. It was not even three hours after I posted the video that she's telling me about being arrested. Why? Because she tried to get three cars. Sorry, you can't do that. I already told you. The videos, I've explained all of that. And the young lady who's calling me up asking me that question, I've already explained this on video. I'm not going to explain it again. Forget y'all. Okay? That's not my job, and I'm not going to let you do that to me. Let's go, and we need to read this so that you guys understand it. Pay attention to this, please. Only transactions that the custodian, Federal Reserve, may make in the minor's account after the minor attains the age of 18. It doesn't say after minor attains the age of majority. It says after you attain the age of 18 years. That's why I keep telling you is that they're not stealing from you. They're not taking anything out of your account, people. They can't. The law prohibits that. The only thing they can do is purchase new securities or transfer securities contained in your account to another account in the name and social security number of you. The receiving account in the name of the social security number in the minor may be a primary account established by the minor or it may be another minor linked account with the same or a different custodian. But the main custodian is the Federal Reserve. We just showed you. Hold on. Let's go back here. Custodian means Federal Reserve Bank or an entity within the United States designated by such Federal Reserve Bank under the terms and conditions prescribed by such Federal Reserve Bank. A depository specifically designated, that's the other custodian, by the Secretary of the Treasury for the purposes of this part. Such other entities as Secretary of the Treasury may designate for the purposes of this part. Okay? There's another definition I want you guys to see, and it ain't none of these. I'm going to have to pull that definition. So if you guys will excuse me for just a second, I have to go potty. I'm sorry. I'm joking. I shouldn't have said that. I ain't got to go nowhere. Y'all got to go. Y'all got to go on hold because I got to pull up an email and I don't want you to see the person's information. So one second. Ladies and gentlemen, you might say, well, if he said he got a headache, how come he raising his voice? Doesn't that make the headache worse? No, sorry. That doesn't make these headaches worse. These headaches are as a result of my not getting any rest. And my being up. Okay. But the young lady, y'all know her name, Miss Houston. Not Whitney Whitney Houston. No, 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 no. Oh, I mean Miss Hudson. Y'all know Miss Hudson, right? Played in Dream Girls, Jamie Foxx. Mm-hmm. Did the song with Nayo talking about uh I think it was Can't Stand the Rain. Mm-hmm. Jennifer Hudson. Let it be. Let it be. She's telling me to let it be, y'all. She's telling me just to read this to you guys so that you'll get and understand what's really going on. Since some of you guys are so smart, you're smarter than me that you want to tell me how to do my videos. You want to tell me how I'm supposed to conduct myself when you can't even conduct your own lives. I don't care if some of you don't come to this site anymore. You weren't here to begin with most of you. So if you don't come here anymore, that's on you. You'll be the one missing out on this information. You'll be missing out on one of the only people on the internet who shows you proof of what they're talking about and who's not just showing it to you, but who can back up what he's saying, who can prove the proof of what he's saying, who is not just going out there and trying stuff just to be trying stuff. Now, mind you, for the sake of all of you, I went out there and I tried everything, even letting those fools put me on vacation and trying everything. Okay? And suffering as a result of trying to help you. 
So before you criticize, chastise, and condemn me for anything, you understand that I'm doing this of my own free will. And as long as I'm doing it of my own free will and nobody's paying me to do this, all of y'all can kiss my black. I'm sorry. She told me to let it be. I just, I'm just letting y'all know. So I'm telling you, mother, to let it be. Sitting up here getting on my gu- nerves. Stupid mother. I'm sorry. I shouldn't be doing that. Y'all know I'm playing. No, I'm not playing. I'm actually being serious. Because I'm so sick and tired of you selfish, ignorant mother. I can't stand selfishness. And some of you people are so selfish. You only want answers to your questions because you got a situation. I don't care about your situation. I wasn't there to help you get in that situation. Go and talk to one of those stupid attorneys. And that's right. They're going to charge you to talk to them, aren't they? And then they're going to get over on you. So you go ahead and talk to them. Okay? You can't buy me. I don't charge a fee. But if you want a consultation, then you write me and tell me you want a consultation. I'll give you a way of getting the funds to me, and we will talk then I will give you all of the little secrets that I'm not putting out on video. You'll get your one hour of me to tell you everything. The gentleman I talked to this afternoon, he shares information with me, so he doesn't have to pay. We were on the telephone for an hour and 30 minutes today. But as I told him, I couldn't continue to call because I had a headache. It it interferes with my ability to concentrate. Okay? That's how I operate. And I told him that I was gonna share this information. I didn't ask for his permission. I told him I was gonna share this information with you all because I said it was going to help you. Now watch, after I do this video, now all of a sudden everybody else is gonna be talking about the Federal Reserve being a custodian of the account. When they didn't do the research in the first place, they're gonna go off of this information that I'm providing here, okay? I couldn't give you this information at first, why? Because I told you to do your research. But once he gave it to me, once he showed me the code, that means other people knew. Now I could give it to you because that means somebody else did the research. But that still means you got to do more research, people. Is that my girl again? Come on now. Stephanie? Stephanie, tell them about Secret Lady. She's telling you all about Secret Lady, y'all. That's Stephanie. Stephanie Mills, if y'all don't know the name. Miss, I can sing if you're nasty. Sorry, from Miss Jackson. Nasty girl. Anyway, let's pay attention with 363.25 says of chapter 31, part two, or chapter two. This is uh, title 31. 363.25 chapter two, number seven says, the custodian may grant the right to view the securities in a miner's account to another No Treasury Direct account holder says he may grant. Let's underline that. Okay, but this is what we're looking for. Pay attention. Great lady, see, this is my this is this is my song, y'all. You're the one I want. Come on, Stephanie. Just can't let. I'm sorry. Anyway, no secret lady. Anyway. Now, it says he may grant the right to redeem securities in a miner's account to the secondary owner, if any, named on the securities held by the miner. Ladies and gentlemen, he may grant the right to redeem the securities to a secondary account holder. Uh Uh-uh. But pay attention to this so that you understand that this mother know what he's talking about. Because a lot of y'all don't understand. Okay? When the miner reaches the age of 18 years... The only transaction a custodian may make in a miner's account after the miner attains the age of 18 or to purchase new securities or to transfer securities contained in a miner's account to another account name and social security number of the account, receiving the account name and number of the miner may be the primary account established by the miner or it may be another miner linked account to the same or different account. The custodian may transfer one or more of the securities at a time. This is in 363.27. Then it says the miner must establish his or her own treasury direct account. Ladies and gentlemen, prior to the transfer of his or her securities. So we were correct that you are to be opening up a treasury direct account. When we told you about getting your birth certificate amended, we were correct about that. But remember, they keep changing the system. 
So my suggestion, pay attention, is that you notify, excuse me, the Federal Reserve Bank that you've attained the age of 18. We've created the affidavit primarily for that purpose. You can use the original POA if you wish. That's up to you. But you let them know you've attained the age of 18 and you want to gain control of your securities. If they do not allow you to gain control of the securities held in your minor account, because this proves that you have an account with that custodian of record. It's not a secret account. So stop calling it a secret account. You may call it the unknown Federal Reserve account, but stop calling it a secret account. And the fact that they're calling it TDA, they're absolutely right, people, when they're calling it a TDA account. New TDA account, new Treasury Direct account, okay? The miner's account to another new Treasury Direct account. So do you not know? Pay attention. The custodian may grant the right to view securities held in the miner's account to another new Treasury Direct account. That means that there's already a Treasury Direct account established. Do you guys, would you like to know whom you're supposed to be contacting as well? Not just this agency. Do you want to know whom else you're supposed to be contacting? Well, let's go ahead and do this. We're going to do 31 CFR 363.25. Okay. Like I said, you want information from me? Sorry. I'm not supposed to be there. This is the California law. This was sent to me directly by the director of the family division. Okay. We will talk, well, look, it says age of majority. This is the section. A minor is an individual under the age of 18. The period of majority is calculated from the first minute of the day on which the individual is born by the same minute of the corresponding day completing the period of minority. An adult is an individual over the age of 18. So you're already an adult in California. They're sending me this to let me know that all that other stuff I'm talking about ain't necessary. The use or reference of the words age of majority, age of minority, adult, minor, and words of similar intent in any instrument, order, transfer, or governmental communication made in this state before blah, blah, blah. This is the new law that they changed regarding the age of majority. I'm aware of that. So, look, they went and did research for me. Now, I can't even be mad at them. Okay, this is the code known as the family code. Okay. This is the code that deals primarily with minors in the age of majority, okay? We don't need to read this. That talks about codes and old codes. This is the Jacksons, y'all, talking about never can say goodbye. Uh, let's see. No, this is that new law, so we don't need that. Unless provisions and context otherwise requires, general provisions and rules constructing this part govern the construction of this code. So not really worried about that. Unless expressly stated, division means, and then we're going to do that code in a second. I need to see if uh, singular reference to husband, wife, spouse, married person, uh, comparable term includes person who are lawfully married shall is mandatory, may is persuasive, shall not, and may not is prohibitory. So in California, apparently shall and shall not and may not, those are words that mean something, mandatory. So when the law says it shall, they shall do this. If a provision or clause in this code or its application to any person or circumstance is held invalid, the invalidity does not affect other provisions or applications. This is actually, we have a similar statement of this in our POA. Okay. Basically, most laws have that part in their code. Now, I will tell you, like I said, they did the research and you see they did it from online. And I know she had the attorney do it. Okay. And so I'm glad. This is the, uh, the register recorder that you guys heard me on. Uh, she's not a register recorder. She's actually a vital statistics deputy director. Okay. A child whom support may be ordered means a minor child or a child with whom support is authorized under this section. Community estate, community property. Uh, country includes city and country. Okay. Data separation, not concerned about data separation. Determining separation, employee benefit plan, family support, uh, income expense declaration. 
Hey, I ain't supposed to be getting offline. Go back on. What's wrong with you? Get out of the way. I said get out of the way. All right, verify the username and password and get out of the way. All right, person includes natural person. Look at that. A natural person, like I said, individual means a natural person. You already seen that, right? You already know about that. Proceedings. Property includes real and personal property and any interest therein. So even when you talk about property, you're talking about interest in a property. Property declaration means a form for a property declaration in family law matters adopted by the Judicial Council. Okay, there is a way to do a property declaration on the record with your birth certificate. Quasi-community property, don't care about that. Exchange of real and personal property. Petitioner, don't care about that. Respondent, separate property, spousal, spouse. State means, look, hold on. Statutory interpretation says this is a lie. State cannot mean a state of the United States. State cannot mean a district of Columbia because a district of Columbia is not a state. State cannot mean a commonwealth because a commonwealth is not a state. State cannot mean a territory because a territory is not a state. State cannot mean an insular possession subject to the jurisdiction of the United States. So none of this means the United States. This is statutory interpretation. Okay? That's what you have to go by. This is color me bad. It's called roll the dice off of their I want to sex you album okay i like calling me that they sang the earth the moon and the sun the sun love that song all right don't care about support orders and for people who have child support i'm going to tell you 1099 oid i'm just going to start it there and you're going to have to do your research after that oh certificates of birth following adoption legitimation and court determination of paternity Adjudication of the facts and percentages. That's a uh, parentage. That's the court. Okay. All records information state registrar shall furnish a certified copy of the newly amended record of birth prepared under authority of this article to the registrant without additional costs. When you get it from the court, when you get a quarter, all records and information specified in this article, other than the newly issued birth certificate, shall be available only upon order of the court of record. Okay. They word it that way on purpose. Okay, let's go here. Voluntary declaration of paternity. Don't care about the voluntary declaration of paternity. That's. Don't think twice. And roll the dice. No, don't care about that section either. I haven't gone over this. Somebody just sent this to me. Minute birth record. Reflect the court order change of name. No, I don't want that. State administration. The state register shall prescribe and furnish all record forms for use to, in carrying out the purpose of this part. To or shall prescribe the format, quality content of forms electronically produced in each county. Ladies and gentlemen, and no record form or format other than those prescribed shall be used. I read it country earlier. I'm sorry, it was county. I apologize. I don't know why I was doing it. Like I said, I'm tired, 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 I tell you. State administration, ladies and gentlemen, it's all administrative, all of it. But here's to let you know that you don't have to use their form. It says, or shall prescribe the format, quality, or content of the form. Okay. You don't have to use their form. It's not required. For instance, an affidavit. But I'm not letting the issue go. I'm still going to go after them for their lack of intelligence. I don't care about any of that. I don't care about any of that. I don't care about any of that. Well, it's still the same stuff. Signature, person. State Department, Director, Director of Health Services, Board, State. Now look at this. State means the state of California. Unless applied to the different parts of the United States, and in the latter case, meaning the United States, it includes the District of Columbia and the territories. State can never include those individuals. Okay? Let's see. 
I'm just looking, y'all. Uh, this video was supposed to be short, but I figured they sent it to me. I will show you the California Code dealing with the age of majority. Okay, this is general provision. Each live birth, fetal death, and marriage that occur in a state shall be registered as provided in this part as prescribed in the certificate of form. Certificate form. In addition, a report of every judgment of dissolution of marriage and legal separation nullity decree shall be filed with the state register as provided in this part. All confidential information included in birth, fetal, death, death, marriage certificates, and reports of dissolution of marriage, legal separation, nullities, it's a nullity, that are required to be filed in this part, by this part, shall be exempt from the California Public Records Act contained in chapter 3.5, commencing blah, 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 okay? The department is charged with the uniform and thorough enforcement of this part throughout the state and may adopt additional regulations for its enforcement, okay? State registrar shall adopt regulations specified both as follow procedures. Don't care about those. The department may make an enforced regulation. No, no, no. The registrar shall inform the local registrar with the seizes. Nope. The certificate of live birth death fetal records shall be written legibly and durable black ink and or certificate is not complete or correct that does not supply all of the item information called for and satisfactorily account for their omissions. Uh-oh. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. So I miss ya. Certificate of birth, life, birth, allegedly, durable black ink, and certificates is not complete and correct that does not supply all of the item of information called for and satisfactorily account for their omissions. Thank you. That applies to me. All marriage license, no. This song to see. This is my song. You all know. This is my song. Pay attention. All physicians, informants, funeral directors, clergy, and judges, and all other persons having knowledge of the facts shall supply upon prescribed form any information they they possess regarding the birth, fetal death, marriage, and all upon demand of the state or local registrar, all physicians, informants, funeral directors, clergy, judges, public employees, and other persons who supply upon prescribed form information that they possess regarding the birth, fetal death, marriage, 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 marriage shall in no way cause use of derogatory, demeaning, or colloquial, racial, or ethnic descriptor. Okay. No alteration or change in any respect shall be made on any marriage license certificate after its acceptance for registration by the local registrar and no other record made pursuant to this part except where supplemental information required for statistical purposes is furnished. Okay, this is the one that they're going off of. They don't want to make any changes. They got a code there that prohibits that. All right. Every person in charge of the hospital or the institution in which the person is admitted for treatment and or confinement shall make a record of the personal, medical, and other information for each patient sufficient for adequate for completion of the birth and death certificate. Absence of conflicting information related to a prayer. Uh, no, don't want that. That's not part of what we need. Yeah. Open your heart, y'all. Feel the touch. Now. Pay attention to this. Certificate of live birth for any live birth occurring after January 1st, 2016 shall contain, that means this was amended 2016, shall contain the items necessary to establish the fact of birth and shall contain only the following information. The full name and sex of the child, the date of birth, including the month, day, year, and hour, the place of birth, the full name, birthplace, uh, birthplace of each parent, including month, date, and year, the parental relationship of the parents of the child. And you know how it says child, the full name of the mother shall be the birth name of the mother. The birth mother is the one is one of the parents listed on the certificate of live birth. Her name shall be placed on the second parent line. If the parents are not married to each other, the father's name shall not be listed on the birth certificate unless the father and the mother sign a voluntary declaration of paternity at the hospital before the birth certificate is submitted for registration. The birth certificate may be amended to add the father's name at a later date only if the paternity for the child has been established by a judgment of the court 
of competent jurisdiction or by the filing of a voluntary declaration of paternity. Multiple births and birth order, multiple births, signature, relationship, name and title, mailing address, date and acceptance state, blank space for entry of date of death, no. Additional items, subdivision, certificate, birth weight, pregnancy, race, ethnicity of the mother and father, residence address of the mother, blank space for entry of census tract, uh, birth, mother address, date for a parental care visit, date for last normal minutes and commencing, blah, blah, blah. Uh, no description, mother, father, occupation, education, phys principal source of payment, no exception, and indication of whether or not the child parent desires automatic insurance of the social security number to the child, the social security number of the mother and the father, unless subdivision applies. When the objection is made by other parent to furnish the information verified in paragraph number three, uh, confidential portion of the birth, live birth of a parent, dub, dub, blah, parent shall nope, the state register shall nope, information relating to concurrent, the vital statistics advisor committee, no, notwithstanding section three, the registrar shall review the vital statistics registry committee. This section shall become operative January 1st, 2016, contains two lines that read name of the parents, contacts mother, father, Parent certificate of live birth described subdivision shall be used by all local registered deputies, registers, to local parent, informant, parent relationship, all births occurring prior to the parent may amend in a manner prescribed by Article 1 commencing with section the title mother, parent, father, parent, the certificate of live birth to instead have one of the parent relationship designations specified in paragraph 2, division A. This section shall become operative. Okay, it does say that they can, a parent may amend in the manner prescribed in Article 1, commencing in this section of whatever that section is. That's 103.225. So we got a ways to go. And so let's go, because we're dealing with amendment, y'all. We're actually dealing with correction, but let's see. What is it? Where yet? 103.225. I'm still reading. That's right, I'm gonna take you to it because those of you in California might see something here as I'm going through these pages that pertain to you. The person name on the certificate. A person who has petitioned to adopt the person name on a certificate of live birth, section blah, 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 health and service, service family code, the department, person with a valid scientific interest in determining, determined by the state register who are engaged in demographic, uh, no, don't care about that. Okay, notwithstanding this section, the department may transmit Social Security Administration information necessary to issue a Social Security number to a child in case where the child's parent has requested issuance in paragraph no. After a public hearing, consultation with vital statistics, don't care about that. Notwithstanding this section, the parent's Social Security number contained confidential medical information, no, 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 uh, for a registration of live birth submitted to the local register, the hospital administrator, the person, nope, don't care about that, the medical health record required under this section, nope, don't care about that. When an objection is made by the parent for furnishing information requested an item, uh, report information shall not be entered. Uh, with the exception of statistical, nope. With the exception of the department shall maintain, the state register appointed by the statistics committee shall have the following duties. Review, 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 vital statistics. Uh, uh, went too fast. Okay, the state registrar shall publish 30 days. A person who released a copy of confidential portion of the birth certificate accept as no, don't care about that. Gotta go on down. That's my birth certificate. That's my that's my short, short, short form, y'all. I know that one. Oh, they sent me another application. Look at that. They sent me another application. They want a sworn statement. And they're telling me they sent me a sample, y'all. Interesting. Okay. Oh, they didn't oh, they didn't like the application. Take a look at this. Uh let me show y'all the application. Hold on. Do you see how they scratched this out in the affidavit? 
and they look at that told me who i am guardian at litem for the infant and look age of majority mother they scratched that out interesting ain't it gonna scratch out all of my stuff i'm about to take care of these hoes i mean these people all right this is what i have to go through y'all okay so basically they're not sending me anything other than that i can already take care of oh look at that they didn't like my authorization form uh the record shall reflect attaining the age of majority of adulthood binding upon all jurisdictions that i'm a native american born in america republic of california los angeles county known as los angeles at the date indicated on the certificate light birth so help me god blah 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 okay and i do everything under penalty of perjury of divine retribution or penalty of perjury of the constitution of the united states and the state in which i live penalty of perjury of the united states and of the state in which i live okay the constitution of the united states and the constitution of the state in which i live that is the statement that i make from this point every point all day long but we got some work to do we're gonna we already got the pdf i saved it so let's uh do our pasting oh, oh. sometimes we just have to listen to a little bit of the moments but we're gonna go past the moments this is war y'all know this song tell them how we gonna be slipping oh man you slipping Wow, wow, wow. Can I get an amen back there in the choir? Can I get somebody to say how we are doing right now? What are we doing? Can somebody tell me what are we doing? I just need to hear it one time. No, no, no. Tell it to me two times. No, 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 One more time. Tell it to me one more time. Y'all know who war is, don't y'all? Now tell it to me. What you doing? They were slipping in the darkness, y'all. What'd they take? Why'd you let them take your friend away? Okay. That's slipping in the darkness, y'all. And that's war. So I just thought I'd let y'all hear a little bit of, whoa. Howling at the moon, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to bring this to a close since this is a continuation of the videos of you accessing your so-called account. We won't call it a secret account because it has nothing to do with a secret account. There's nothing secret about this account. The account exists. It's all throughout the statute. Uh-oh. What'd I do? What'd I do? What'd I do? I must have did something wrong because I ain't got no internet access. Where we at? Come on, V-Day. I can't even see. I'm still connected because I got this right here. Uh, PDA tells me I'm connected, but got to wait. See? Connected. But it's not connected. That's my fault for messing with the phone. Sitting up there letting y'all listen to slipping in the darkness. Let me make sure I'm still connected. Yeah, I'm still connected. Who never said their name. Now look, how to conduct transactions in my account or in the treasury securities held in my account. We'll provide online instructions for conducting transactions through your account. If you aren't able to conduct transactions online, you should contact us at the address provided at 
this number here, offline transaction require certified or guaranteed signatures, blah, blah, blah. Okay. We pulled this up earlier. So now you heard him. He was slipping in the darkness. Okay. Uh-oh. How did that happen? I don't remember hitting that. Get out of here. That's my voice recognition. I got to turn it off or it's going to pick up every word I say and then it's going to start typing up stuff and I don't want it to be typing up stuff. So you guys just got to hold on a minute until I can slip it in the darkness. Okay. Looks like we, we cool. We cool? We cool. Oh, no, 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 no. That's the problem. We're not supposed to be 363.25. That's what it is. So let me get the right code, y'all. That's what the problem is. It's not 363.25. Okay. Let's do this one. Yeah. Copy. It's, um, it's that code we're looking for. Fiscal Service Department, you guys. This is the one I'm looking for. I'm looking for a particular part of the code where it tells you what to do if you can't get your securities from the Federal Reserve. It literally tells you that. Now, again, we are subpart two and we are Bureau of Fiscal Services, okay? And I do, you know, I honestly feel sorry for the people who, they don't want to stay and watch the videos because the videos are too long or he's got too many antics. I really do feel sorry for them because it's going to be them missing out. And that's just too bad. Well, we just, I, I, I don't care. You people keep asking me for information. I'm giving you information, but you don't want to sit up there and pay the price for getting information from me. So if you don't want to pay the price, that's up to you. Okay? That's up to you. Okay. Uh, give me one second. I'm looking. Nah. Uh-oh. Wasn't supposed to do that, y'all. It's part 225. We're supposed to be, I don't know how I got here, but I want part 225. Okay. Yep. Now we got to go to part 225. So let's see if I can do it this way. Part 225, payment of interest, no pledge of definition of government obligation, pledge of government entry obligation, pledge of government obligations, little bond surety, definitions, agency practices, return to government obligation, obligator, bond officials duty, custodians duties and responsibilities. That's what we're looking for, y'all, number seven. I know it was 225.7, as I mentioned, but the problem is I wrote it wrong here. So that's why I couldn't find it. It's supposed to be 225.7. So 22, this is uh, baby face. No, we're going to put that back the way it was. This one is 225.7. I'm not going to leave you. I ain't going nowhere. Because when I tell you I love you, I, my heart that I always will be there. All right, we're at number seven. Now, pay attention, ladies and gentlemen, because this is for you. This is what I've been waiting to show you. Okay? As a matter of fact, let's make that smaller. And let's increase the... This is um, opera. So opera, I have to zoom this way. Okay, that's what I want to do. It's here to stay. And I promise you that we'll be true. Here and now forever. Remember, 31 CFR 2257, custodian and responsibility. Remember, we're talking about the custodian. General, a custodian shall authenticate instructions received from a bond official. 
and shall act in accordance with such authentication. The custodian assumes no liability and is without liability of any kind for acting in accordance with the authenticated instructions, except the custodian's failure to exercise ordinary care. By providing a bond security to government obligations in lieu of blah, 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 we don't need to know that. That's not the part that we're looking for. Let's do C. Absent authentication instruction for the bond official related to the proceeds mature government obligations, the custodian will release the obligor proceed proceeds from mutual government obligations only if the obligor is, has deposited government obligations accepted under 31 blah 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 as amended. It's up to uh, liquidation of government obligations. No nope. application of proceeding liquidation of government obligation. This is not the section. It is supposed to be point seven, but we're not looking for that. We're not looking for this one. So we're going to have to find the other one that actually specifically talks about the Federal Reserve. I think we might be looking at uh, not number seven. I think we might be looking at definition. I think this is the part where it talked about the custodian. So this is 225.2. We're going to go to not bond, don't care about book entries. We care about custodian. This is the definition for custodian, okay? means the Federal Reserve Bank, entity of the United States, designated Federal Reserve Bank. Okay, now let's look at what the depository stands for, okay? Any insured bank as defined in Section 3 of the Federal Deposit Insurance Act or any bank which is eligible to make application to become an insured bank under Section 5 of this such act. A mutual savings bank, a savings bank, a insured credit union. Okay, let's go on. These are all the custodians, the same as I told you all earlier. So uh, if I am reading this correctly, it is the custodian of record we're supposed to notify that we've attained the age of majority. And I need to find out if the Federal Reserve has a form for that. So that's going to take some of you calling and asking them what the form is for letting them know that we've attained the age of majority. Okay. Now, Pay attention, Federal Reserve means a Federal Reserve Bank and its branches, okay? We're not worried about government obligation or obligator. We're not worried about, well, we already know the person means an individual trust, estate, partnership, and a corporation. Uh, registered means the ownership of a definitive government obligation is listed as the issuer records or that the obligation is payable at maturity or call on person in whose name the obligation is inscribed or that the person assignee. Ladies and gentlemen, let's assume that we are the person. And let's say that we can make a call on our securities held by the Federal Reserve. However, please know that the information I read earlier, now I got to find it. It was sent to me an email. And so I'm going to have to put you on pause again so I can find that email. But I believe that email specifically said that it was the Bureau of Public Debt that was the agency that needed to be notified. So what I'm telling people, U.S. Treasury, Bureau of Public, Public Debt and the Bureau of Fiscal Services all should be notified. Hold on. I didn't have to keep you guys on loan hold for that long. As you can hear, Night Shift by the Commodores without Lionel Richie is in the background. And for the Commodores without Lionel Richie, I think this is probably the best song they put out. I was very proud of that group for putting this song out about uh, Teddy Pendergrass, not Teddy Pendergrass, um, Marvin Gaye. And I believe, I'm not sure if it was Otis Redding, but Jackie, no, Jackie. Okay, so Otis and Jackie, because here it comes. Jackie, Jackie, mm, hey, what you doing now? You know what it seems like yesterday? When we were doing what? Working out. And they're talking about working out music-wise. Jackie, Jackie, oh, you set the world on fire. You came and lit it up. Oh, your love is lifting us higher and higher. Give it up. You'll be there at your side. Oh, say you will. It's taking so long, it's bouncing all over the place, but I'm waiting for it to pull up, and it didn't pull up. I'm having a problem with the internet, y'all. I apologize. Gonna be some sweet sounds coming down. 
I'm going to pause y'all while I sing Night Shift to myself and wait for it to catch up. Night Shift, Night Shift, Night Shift. You found another home. I know you're not alone on the Night Shift. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back. And what we're doing. Ooh. Come on now. Tell them how to do it, Freddie. Do, 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 do. This is Freddie Jackson talking about loving somebody up. Actually, he wants to love them down. Okay, this is where I went earlier. This is how I got to here. Because this is the section. I'm just waiting for it to pull up. And yes, I corrected my internet connection. As you see right down here, it's connected. I just had to relaunch it. So we're back up. But it's taking its time because it's a large PDF. It's section 363.27. But 363.27, when I copied it, it gave me some information, okay? Because I copied this whole section right here, okay? Now, this talks about the custodian must have an existing primary treasure direct account, new treasure direct account, in order to open a minor account. The minor account is an account that is linked to the custodian's primary account. The custodian may use his or her primary new account, direct treasury direct account, as a portal to open and access the miner's account. Securities contained in the miner's account shall be registered in the name and social security number of the miner. We just already went over that. Now let's go up and see if we can find something. Uh-oh, I didn't want to go that up. I want to go this up. Come on, Freddie. Tell them. Oh, that's right. I can't do it with this because this is a PDF. Okay. The custodian is a fiduciary for the miner. As to the securities held in the miner's account, the custodian must have an existing primary treasure direct account. The miner account is the account linked to the custodian account. And now I'm looking for the one that actually talks about if the miner wants to gain access. Okay. That's it right there. That's where 363.25 came because this is a section I copied. We will provide an outline instructions for conducting transactions through your account. If you are unable to conduct a transaction online, you should contact blah, 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 and work offline. What is a transfer? Like I said, this is talking about transferring from the minor account. And notice what it says. A transfer is a transaction to move a minimum amount of $25 consisting of principles and proportionate interest of a treasury security from one new treasury direct account to another new treasury direct account in which the ownership of the security changes. Transfer of specific type of security may be limited by the subpart that refers to that security. Now, we talked about opening an account. We don't worry about that. It says the custodian may transfer for securities from a minor account if the transfer will result in a change of ownership in a security. The custodian may not purchase gift securities in a minor account. The custodian may redeem securities on behalf of the minor through the minor's account. We will report the interest earned in the security to the uh, excuse me, to the name and social security number of the minor. Do you understand? This is what's been going on the whole time. Transactions permitted to minor's account. The custodian may make purchase of securities for on behalf of the minor through the minor's account. Okay, but let's see about, oh, well, let's do this. I want to read this one. Procedure for conducting transaction in minor's account. The custodian must conduct all transactions in a minor's account on behalf of the minor. Access to the minor's account is through the custodian's primary account. Ladies and gentlemen, this is talking about your account, not secret. The law is right here. It's right here. All you got to do is look. Pay attention. The custodian may grant the right to view security in the minor account to another new treasury direct account holder and may grant the right to redeem the securities in the minor account, which I've already showed you about to the secondary owner, if any, name on the security held in the minor's account. When the minor reaches the age of 18, this is the section that we're going to be reading. This is the section we're going to be focusing on. We're not going to talk about the attorney, in fact, because that's not part of the conversation. That's not what I scored up and copied. This is the section I copied. This is the section for you. Just love me down. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all know Freddie. That's it over. Let me. Anyway, the only transaction that the custodian may make in a minor's account, the only limited Transaction the custodian may make it a minor's account after the minor attains the age of 18 
are to purchase new securities and to transfer securities contained in a minor's account to another account in the name and social security number of the minor. The receiving account in the name and social security number of the minor may be a primary account established by the minor, by the minor, that's you, Treasury Direct, or it may be another minor linked account for the same or a different custodian. Uh oh, there might be a different custodian. Who that custodian might be? Don't know. It could be the Social Security Administration. All right. The custodian may transfer one or more of the securities at a time, or the custodian may delink the account and transfer all of the securities contained in the miner's account to the previously established primary new treasury direct account. The miner must establish his or her own primary treasury direct account prior to the transfer of his or her own securities. Okay? Gave you that information already. In order to gain control of securities held in the miner's account, the miner must first open his or her own primary account. The miner may gain control of the securities held in the miner's account by the custodian, transferring the securities held in the miner's account to the miner's primary account, or the miner may request a public debt. That public debt, that's the department I was telling you I was looking for, transfer the securities to his or her primary account. This is the code you want to rely on. We rely on certification of the custodian that he or she is acting on behalf of the minor. We are not liable to the minor or any other person or party for acting on behalf of the minor for the actions of the custodian, nor are we liable for the application of any proceeds from the transfer or redemption of securities held in the minor's account. The custodian agrees to indemnify and hold harmless the United States in the event that they, or excuse me, that we suffer you guys know about try again, don't y'all? Okay. You guys know about try again, don't y'all? Ladies and gentlemen, I want y'all to know that this is my song. All the days gone by. See. Ooh, I've been search the whole world over and never find what you always giving me but I told you you needed more walks more I, I'm skipping it that's the space one I was doing more walks more talks wanna do yeah but you more roses no romance oh, no candlelight and no slow dance but that's just how it is. Maybe we can try again. See, I don't want to make a mistake. I know this is Atlantic Star, but let's do it. I got to do it. I got to make sure. I know this is my group, Atlantic Star, T-R-Y-A-G-A-I-N-A-T-L-A-N-T-I-C-S-T-A-R. Uh-oh, that's E. Let's see what they give me, y'all. Ooh, I remember when you told me you needed more walks, more talks, more feeling closer to you. Hey, gonna be close to you again. I gave you some roses. See, I could be wrong. I'm looking for try again. This ain't an Atlantic star. I'm, I'm upset. Uh-oh. Uh, 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 who are they? Sorry, I am wrong. Uh-oh. We can try again. We can try again. SOS band. I'm almost certain it's SOS. No, that's Aaliyah. I don't want Aaliyah. This song. It's either Atlanta Star or SOS. Come on now, try again. Nope. Oh, oh, I'm way wrong. Champagne. <laughs> I'm so wrong. And I know it's champagne. Sorry, I couldn't think of the name. It's champagne. That's how I know. Because I know it's champagne. Ooh, I remember when. Anyway, we're going to do family affair next time. Uh-uh, family affair. Sorry, on my cell phone, the name doesn't show up. So it just says track number this. So I had to go off of memory and I haven't listened to try again in a couple of weeks. But anyway, any loss on the account and the claim. Ladies and gentlemen, to bring all of this to a close while I listen to try again, because me and try again, we're going to carry this 
out and I'm going to listen to this song at least three more times tonight because Try Again has always been my song. My song. I don't care if it's your song. I don't care if it brings back memories to you. Not my problem. I care because this brings back memories to me. Try again. My song. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to pay attention to what you get to do with the securities in your account. Pay attention. The custodian, the Federal Reserve. We've already gone over who the custodian is. All right. We've already read the code who the custodian is. The same code we're reading right now, the custodian means the Federal Reserve Bank or an entity within the United States designated by such Federal Reserve Bank under the terms and conditions prescribed by the Federal Reserve Bank. So the custodian is the Federal Reserve. Okay, you have an account with the Federal Reserve. We just proved it. The custodian may grant the right to view securities in a miner's account to another new Treasury Direct account holder or may grant the right to redeem securities in a minor account to a secondary owner. You are that owner. If any named on the securities held in the miner's account. Here is the point you need to pay attention to is E. It's a very long paragraph, but it's enough to give you an understanding of what you need to do. The only transaction that the custodian may make in a miner's account after the miner attains the age of 18 years are to purchase new securities and to transfer securities contained in a miner's account to another account in the name of the miner and social security number of the miner. So your money's ain't going nowhere. Your estate ain't going nowhere. All your stuff is right there. It ain't been taken by nobody. So stop it. The receiving account in the name of the Social Security, in the name and Social Security number of the minor may be the primary account established by the minor, established by you, or it may be another minor linked account with the same or a different custodian. The custodian, so that means you may have two accounts with the same custodian. Anyway, the custodian may transfer one or more securities at a time, or the custodian may delink the account and transfer all of the securities contained in the account to the minor's previously established new Treasury Direct account. Okay, that means that there was already a treasury direct account. Now you're going to have to establish a new one. If you ain't already done that, then that's what you need to do. Okay, the miner must establish his or her own new treasury direct account prior to the transfer of his securities. Just that simple. That's the rule. That's the law. That's what they must follow. You must know the law. I remember when you told me in order to gain control of the securities held in a miner's account, the miner must first open his or her own primary account. Pay attention. You have to open your own account in order to gain control of the securities held in your account. Remember, a miner is someone who has not gained control of the securities in their account. So you must open up your own primary account. Okay? See, I lost the signal again. Maybe we can try again. The miner may gain control of the securities held in the miner's account by the custodian transferring the securities held in the miner's account to the miner's primary account. Or the miner may request the public debt, the Department of Public Debt, that's why it's capitalized. This is the Department of Public Debt, that's what I was talking about earlier, to transfer the securities held in his or her primary account. There is a form for it, people. This is a government agency. There is a form. For it. You have to call and ask them, what is the procedure? What is the form for complying with what? What code is that? Can you tell us what code? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We ain't going to try again. We're going to go up so you can see what code this is so you understand because it's a family affair. 363.27 and we are at 7. 363.27 at 7. Oh, no, no, at F7 and E, F7, Frank, F is in Frank, 7, and section E, E is the section, the numbers are the subsections of the section, so just do 363.27 E, I told you before 363.27 F, because that highlights the account, so you can do 363.27 E and F, okay? Just that simple. Or it's not F. I was wrong. It is 7. 7E. I apologize. 7 is the number. So 363.27.7.E. I thought it was F. I apologize. You see, it starts off with A. So after we go to A... There's A, then there's 2, there's 3, there's I, there's 4, there's B, there's C, there's D. No, I was right. 
But where's E? Where is E? Yo, Easy! We want Easy! You guys know Family Affair, don't y'all? I'm looking for E. I don't see E. I got A, but you notice the very next line under five is six, then there's seven, and then there's E. So it can't be seven E, this is section E. Oh, I'm looking for D. Duh, there's D, sorry. So it's under C, D, E. 363.27 CDE. This tells you exactly what the procedures are. They can't argue with you on these procedures. All you need to do is call them on asking what is the procedure. Federal Reserve first. You have to contact the Federal Reserve. I suggest you all do it by letter. Okay? You can do it by telephone call and tell them what code you're following, 363.27, the securities held in your primary account with the Federal Reserve. Well, you don't have an account. You know, blah, 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 blah. They're going to tell you that because remember, everybody was just trying to access the account. They were doing it the wrong way because nobody asked them for the procedures. Okay. Oh, and by the way, you guys, you know, um, what's that young lady's name? Miss Tutsi? Heather? Is that her name? I'm not, I'm not sure. I haven't talked about her in a while. If you guys can just let her know about this so that she knows that she didn't do anything wrong that she had every right to do this. She just didn't follow the right procedures. And you cannot be held accountable for sitting up there doing something for which you have the right to do. She has the right to access the account. If they have a procedure, they should have told her. If she was doing it wrong, they should have told her. She cannot violate the law by trying to access her account. She gave them all the primary information for accessing the account. They had everything they needed. She was above the age of 18. Oh, by the way, you guys are not letting them know you're above the age of 18. So that's what you get. Okay. Again, as I told you, you did not have the right to access the account. Why? Because you did not follow the procedure. There's a procedure for everything. I'd already told you about the account before. None of you did the research. Okay. And it was only because of the conversation today that I told the person that that's the code that I need to be able to show these to this guy, uh, the rest of you. So he gave me this code right here. Three, two, two, five, or not three, two, two, five, two, two, five, uh, not three, two, two, five. Let's do that. Let's get that code back up here. Two, two, five. Okay. This is the code. 31 CFR 225.2 under definitions. Okay. And it tells you exactly who the custodian is. When you look up custodian under the um, 363.6 custodian of a minor account means a person. Remember, a person can mean a corporation like the Federal Reserve who opens an account on behalf of the minor. That's the Federal Reserve. We just read that. Okay. And then we went to 227 and it told us that. That's where we just were. But to find out who the custodian actually is, we had to go to 32, I mean, 31 CFR 225.2 for the definition of what custodian is. Okay. So now you have your proof that you have an account with the Federal Reserve. Now you can go and tell everybody and their grandmama that you now have proof. You just need to do your research, put these codes together that I just showed you, and we're going to give them to you again. You have 363.6. He wants new. This is my Gladys and my pimps. I love this woman. Okay, Gladys and I, we done been through a whole lot, y'all. 225.2. We done been through a lot. Going back to fine, y'all. Okay. And when you get to 27, you're looking for C, D, and E. These are the sections you're looking for. It will explain all you need. And if you want the rest, Minnesota Court Rule 220. This is all about the age of majority, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, a minor is the person who has not attained the age of majority and has not taken control of their securities. You'll find that under minor. Okay, these are the keywords that you're looking for. You're looking up minor and custodian. 
and you're going to find a minor account. Okay, so you're looking up that word, that word, and this word, we're going to separate. So if you're going to be doing some research, that's what you're looking at under definitions under CFR 363.6. That will get you your starting point. Everybody and their grandmama keep asking me, but well, what's the next step? What's the next step? The first step is you should have been paying attention to the videos I did on the birth certificate and the minor account, which all you had to do was type in minor account, birth certificate, and infant estate. Those three things. Hold on. Minor account, new line, birth certificate, new line, infant estate, new line. Stop listening. Stop listening doesn't just turn it off. So these are the things that you have to be looking up, ladies and gentlemen, when you're doing a YouTube search for this information, because this is how my videos are listed. And you'll see that on these, I'm the only one doing videos on this at present. Why? Because I keep telling you, it's all about the infant estate. Oh, this is Usher, Ursher, Ursher, and Ursher. I'm sorry, Usher, I'm gonna stop playing with your name. God, that fool gonna kill me. Uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, and I know you're going to get the, my people that call me and let me know. I'm sorry, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> anyway, I like the song right here. Be on a day, on a bend your door. Now, now, see, I didn't like some of the words in this song and what he talks about. But this is not moving mountains, this is trading places. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, my videos are listed under minor account, birth certificate, infant estate. I go over all the details. Why don't you look at those first before you start calling people and asking people, what's your policy? <laughs> okay, it's not enough for you to call them and ask them what their policy is. It's enough for you to call them and know what you're talking about so you can cut them off before they start treating you like you're one of them sovereign citizens or those people who just watch videos and just start doing things because that's what they have been warned against. That's what they have been counseled against. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you how corporations work, especially government corporations. We have what's called meetings, briefings. We have special briefings and we pass out memos to people. And we talk about people like you who call in but who don't know what they're doing and who just calling in just to be calling in because they just don't give up. Okay? So to keep you from going through that, you have to know the words to use. The person I'm talking to, he paid attention to me. You know what attention he paid? The attention was use their own codes against them. Okay? He... Uh-oh, I can't do that. Sorry. This I'm putting this up here for you guys. This is not this is not for me. I know where these codes are. Uh-oh, didn't mean to do that. I meant to do that. Trade in places. Okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's interesting. I wasn't even trying to do that, but I like that. I didn't know that that would do that. Hold on. Let's do that again. Nope, it didn't do it. Hold on. We do that one, E, and that one. Nope, it didn't do it. Oh, I, nope. I don't know what I did. Let's see. Nope. Don't know how I did it, y'all. Oh, well, I messed up. It worked the first time. Or was it this? Nope. Didn't mean to do that either. Let's do that, and let's do that. Okay, I actually like that, that it does that. Didn't know it did. Okay. Anyway, we don't give a what. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. You got your answer to getting access to that account the right way. You don't have to write any money orders. You just have to write a couple of letters getting the information you need. Okay. Don't call me. Don't ask me, well, what else do I do? Ladies and gentlemen, I haven't done this yet. I don't have the time to do it. I'm too busy doing so many things, trying to keep SATCOM viable for you, trying to come up with new things, giving you guys CPNs, making sure you have that, and then working out the fact that we're going to get QCIP numbers for you. 
We're going to provide QCIT number information for all of you. We just haven't figured out how much we're going to charge for that because other people are charging. For instance, we're getting people 98 series numbers for free. Other people are charging $150 and more for a 98 series number. Okay, when I say $150, that was the cheapest I've seen. I've seen people charging over $1,500 for a 98 series number, and if only you knew how easy it was. Okay, there was a gentleman who contacted me yesterday who I've known for years. He hadn't been in touch with me for a while, but he finally was able to get in touch with me. And he asked me that because this was something we talked about in the past, and I gave him the information on how to get his 98 series number. That is a SACOM thing. I gave that to SACOM. I ain't giving that to y'all, but because he was part of the old commission, he got that from me because that was a previous conversation. But the rest of you don't get that. Okay? That is a SACOM thing. We have this thing at SACOM called proprietary. If it's proprietary information for SACOM, it states with SACOM. I can't give it out to everybody else. But once I see information on the internet, then I can give it to you. But this information hasn't been put on the internet and I haven't seen it, so I cannot give it to you. But this information right here, I can give to you. This was not proprietary. This was my information. Okay? So I'm giving this information to you and I hope that it is of some benefit. So what are you gonna do? You're gonna do your research. You're gonna look at the videos on the minor account, the infant estate, and the birth certificate that are on YouTube, on the Eon2 YouTube channel. Okay? You're gonna take a look at those. While looking at those, you're going to pay attention to the words. You're going to pay attention to the codes. You're going to look up code CFR 363.6.27. You're going to look up those codes. Then you're going to look up 225.2 of Title 31 CFR. And when you look up 27, you're going to look up C, D, and E in particular, and you're going to highlight the key words that you saw me highlight. Okay? You're going to understand who the custodian is, and you're going to contact the custodian. Remember, the custodian is a trustee. It's a fiduciary. Now, remember, you are the beneficiary to the account. You're the minor, but you're the beneficiary to the minor account. Oh, I'm sorry. You're not the minor. It's your account. You're the beneficiary. You're not the minor. Whew, I got to make sure I tell you that. You are not the minor. You are the beneficiary of that minor account. You hold title to the minor because the minor is an entity. The minor is not a person. Okay? The minor is not a person. The minor is an entity. Shh. Okay? The account was set up at birth. That's why the minor can attain the age of majority on the 18th birth date of the account. Oh, Senator your love? Stevie Wonder? Y'all know Stevie Wonder? I always thought it was send her your love, but it's send one your love. And see, he says him, so I guess it, he's a man saying, so Stevie Wonder ain't like that, so it would be send one your love. So I thought, send her your love? Okay. It's Stevie, Ebonics. All right, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I hope this information proves to be somewhat beneficial to some of you. Some of you are not going to appreciate it, but some of you who know what you're doing, who have already done some research, are going to understand how important this information is. So this is for you, okay? Don't say I never did anything for you in particular because this is for you specifically. That's why I'm doing the video. I'm not doing it for the people who don't understand what's going on. I'm not doing it for the people who haven't done a little bit of research and understand that this is the final piece of the puzzle that they needed, that all they need to do is find out what the procedures are and follow the procedures. And then they get back with people like me and others and tell them, and don't try to make a buck off of people because some of you are so selfish. That's why I've been holding on to this information because I know some of you are not gonna contact me. You're gonna wanna create a franchise, a business, because Although now you're going to have access to your account, you're going, to get, you're going to want to get rich because you're greedy, you're selfish. Sorry, I'm just telling you like it is. You know, there have been so many people who have been utilizing the information that I put out there and have been having success and have not been contacting me. Now, then there are those people who, you know, after three days, they have success and they want to contact me. Success is not a three-day thing. For instance, I have somebody who said they used the money order to pay a bill. And another person who said they used Social Security account to pay a bill. And it hasn't been three weeks. I told him it has to be three weeks. It has to be three weeks. I don't care anything about the new rule on the uh, ACH. Okay. I don't care about that rule. You have to wait two weeks. There's a 14 day period. Do you guys of dishonor? Do you guys not know that? That's because you haven't done your research. 
I had somebody who almost argued with me about that yesterday. And I tried to tell him, where did you get the information from? He said, well, I got the information from such and such. I said, well, where did he get the information from? Well, I guess you. Exactly. So I'm telling you, you got to wait at least two weeks. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a statutory period of dishonor, 14 days. So you have to wait two weeks, just the way it is. That's UCC. That has nothing to do with them uh, changing the ACH because they haven't changed the UCC. Okay? So me and Stevie are telling you very well, that's the way this goes. So I hope this information proves helpful. So please understand, just today alone, you've received over four hours worth of information from me, and I spent over five hours producing these videos today. That's the type of effort I put in for people who want to complain because, I don't know, I'm under obligation, I guess. All right, have a good day, have a good night. It's been 13 hours of my being awake. I'm going to go lay down and watch me a little bit of TV and take some sleeping pills and go to sleep so I can do some more paperwork tomorrow. Have a good day. Have a good life. Have a good night. Goodbye.